Hi there, my name is Stanley Steen from Team Debru, and in this video, we are going to take a closer look to Taboola, the native ads platform. So, we're going to take a closer look on their homepage as well as inside to see how it works and to give it a nice review. So, let's dive in. This video is brought to you by Debru.com, the number one affiliate marketing software platform. All right, here we are on the homepage of Taboola, and today we are going to review Taboola platform, the native ads platform. So let's just dive straight in. So, right here at the homepage, reach your customers on websites they trust, drive business results by reaching people genuinely, effectively, and at the right moment. All right, let's see what else is on here. So they have some partners, all cool. Reach your audience in new places, create a meaningful engagement, drive marketing results. All right, let's click on the tab advertisers because that is what we are, of course. And let's see if we can get some more information on the traffic that they have available on Taboola. Reach your audience on top sites. All right, let's take a closer look. Your brand on trusted editorial sites traffic and meaningful consumer interactions, leads and conversions to grow your business. All right. Um, I kind of want to get some more information. So let's high impact awareness. Let's see what this is. Introducing Taboola high impact. All right. Raise brand aware awareness and environment surrounded by professionally pro product. I'm sorry. Raise brand awareness and environments uh, surrounded by professionally produced editorial content. Our long-term partnerships and direct integrations with the world's top websites, app and devices means that you can trust that your ad will be surrounded by premium content every time it's viewed. I reach customers with premium video and image ad placements. All right. Access to the world's largest readership data set from editorial sites. Okay. Inform your campaign strategy with data based on 1 trillion recommendations, 22 billion monthly page views, 560 million daily active users, providing insights to, uh, into what's really top of mind for consumers. All right. We still don't have accurate data on where they have uh, the majority of their traffic. Let's take a look at consideration. Variety of ad formats. Your ads in context people trust. A high volume of high quality traffic. All right. But I want to see some numbers, which apparently uh, they don't have. Maybe at conversions. The last tab under the advertisers. Generate leads and conversions for from people who express interest in your brand. All right, so not a whole lot of uh, information right here. Uh, this is publishers, okay? All right, so let's just uh, let's just take a look at the uh, at the inside of Taboola. Uh, since on the homepage we don't get a whole lot of other um, information. Right. So yeah, okay, let's go to the inside of Taboola. So I already have the tab open here. And we recently uh, created this account and the sign up process. It's not hard. Um, you just have to talk to a representative and you have two different options basically of creating your account. Uh, so basically, you can create a campaign with the self service setup uh, and do it that way. Or if you would like to have some support from Taboola as well, uh, you can do it with the representative on the call. They just ask you for some information so that they basically can do a instant review on your creatives on your landing page to see if it is uh, compliant with their rules. And if it is, they will set up your account and create your campaign for you straight away if you want to. So let's take a look. It's actually the first time that I am seeing this uh, tab. So let's just try to create a campaign. So right here we have the button create. We're going to click on that and we're going to create a campaign. So first we have the campaign name. All right. So let's just call it campaign one. 
And then we have the brand name. So the name of your product, brand or website, this name will appear in your ad below the title. All right, so that's pretty cool. Uh, so we could match this up with a brand name that we have on our landing page, for example, but we can also just use something completely else. It doesn't necessarily have to be the same brand as on the landing page, um, but let's just give our brand a name, all right? Let's just call it Devaru, why not? Devaru. Marketing objective, so select a primary goal for your campaign. So are we gonna lead generations? Uh, are we uh, looking for online purchases, website engagement, brand awareness, or mobile app installs? All right, uh, we're gonna go with online purchases for now. Then we have the schedule. So start running as soon as approved, Specific, uh, specify a start and end date, which is also uh, a possibility um, so that way you can just schedule it so if it gets approved tomorrow for example then it will only start when you uh, when the date is reached which you have selected right here all right and then we, we can set an end date I don't like to work with end dates because for me it's really gonna depend how the campaign is performing and what the data tells me and that will make my decision on when I'm gonna end that campaign so I well, I never use, I actually never use the end date of the, of the schedule. Um, so we're gonna leave this open. Then right here, days and hours, do we want to run 24 seven or do we want, want to run specific days or hours? I'm gonna start with 24 seven and as soon as I have data that tells me otherwise, uh, then I will uh, set specific days or hours. Then we have the campaign targeting. So first we have the location, so select specific countries or regions. And right here we have all the countries available. So let's say we want to run in, where are we gonna run today? Let's say we want to run in the United States, why not? United States, all right. And it says regions as well. I wonder if I can include specific states or cities. Not here, this is only the countries, okay. Oh, right here, locations to be included. Target multiple countries or multiple regions, cities, postal codes in one country. All right, so we can even use the postal codes, which is awesome if you have a very specific place where you want to run your campaigns, or if the data tells you that specific postal codes are working fine. Um, but we can also do the states, of course. DMA, let's check. All right. So these are also regions, I guess, or cities, looks more like cities. Uh, and then we have city here. Okay, so these are the real cities. You can see the state behind them, which is quite nice. Uh, what is DMA? I don't know what DMA is. Okay, whatever. It, it looks like it's, it's some sort of region as well. I'm not quite sure. Um, but we can also target on that. We're just gonna do the entire country once again until we have data that tells me I should uh, locate or I should target specific locations. Then we have the platform. So target specific platforms. Do we want to run desktop, mobile, or tablet? Uh, let's, just do, um, let's just do desktop only for this one. So the connection type then becomes unavailable, right? Because we have desktop only, um, then it's gonna be uh, basically Wi-Fi only because the desktop only works with Wi-Fi, right? Uh, so there's no mobile carrier or anything. However, if we select mobile, we can select the Wi-Fi only option right here. Uh, there's no option to select carrier only, all right? So there's always on Wi-Fi and there's no option for carrier only. Now, I personally haven't used it that often where I run a campaign on carrier only. However, if the data tells you that for your specific campaign, uh, it doesn't really work well if people are uh, using Wi-Fi for whatever reason and it works be better on, uh, on, on the carrier internet, uh, then you might want to have that option. But once again, I won't really miss that option. I have never used it. So it's gonna be for such a specific campaign that maybe you would use it one or tw two times during your complete campaign. So you won't use it that often to run on carrier only. However, it is nice to have that option there, right? In case you do need it. Um, however, in theory, we don't use it that often. All right, so we just keep it like this. 
Then we have the operating system. So we can target specific operating systems. Let's take a look. Let's unfold Android. Okay, so we do have all kinds of options right here. We can do very specific uh, operating system targeting, which is nice. And the same goes for iOS and Windows, of course. So that is pretty cool. We're gonna leave it open to uh, include all the operating systems at the start, and then later we might want to optimize on it. Same goes for browser. We can select specific browsers, uh, include or exclude, of course, right? We have both options. So we can include specific browsers that work, or if we have one browser that doesn't work, we can exclude it. For example, we can exclude Internet Explorer, all right? But we need data to do so, at least you know, you want to have the data to prove that you should target on specific browsers, just like with all the other points. So block sites, uh, we can block specific sites based on performance or brand safety. Uh, so here we have a list of all these site IDs basically, right? So you would just look at your data and if a specific site um, doesn't work, then you might want to exclude it. Basically, this is just creating a sort of blacklist, right? Uh, you're just selecting the sites on which you do not want to run, the, the sites you want to block. So basically, it's kind of a blacklist. Audience targeting. All right, Target, uh, targeting more than one audience type will narrow your audience and limit your reach. Adding more audiences within a singular audience type will widen your audience and increase your reach. My audiences target custom or lookalike audiences. You can include or exclude, suppress each audience. So let's see. All website visitors. Custom audience sites is under 100. Okay. So we don't have any audiences. I think this is for your saved audiences. Let's see, look. Uh, an audience is generated automatically each time you create a conversion under the tracking tab. You can also create a custom audience manually by uploading data from your CRM or by defending the custom audience rule yourself. Okay, so we don't have any audiences yet, so we're gonna leave this open. Uh, marketplace audiences, let's check it out. Select from a uh, readily available audience segment generated from Taboola data or from trusted data providers. We recommend selecting multiple audiences, especially when using exclude to increase the reach of the selected population. All right, so let's see. Demographics, we can target on age. Uh, we can target even on education and career. There are quite some options in here, actually. Business to business. So what kind of businesses do you want to uh, target? Behavioral and interests. So you can target on the interest as well. Quite a long list. Then we have the demo uh, demographic. So the age, education, gender, household, that kind of stuff. Then let's see what's under intent. Okay. So autos and vehicles, banking and finance. So this is more of like the uh, vertical of the uh, of the website, right? And then we have other, other. Let's see what's there. Mobile users with M A I D. Okay, all right. So that's uh, 233 million users. Quite a lot. So do we have those specifics on all of them? Yeah, so you can see the sizes as well of those specific interests or demographics or whatever. So that's pretty cool that you can do uh, such targeting. And then contextual, target any contextual relevant article pages. So let's check it out. Arts and entertainment. So these are, uh, once again, sort of like the verticals uh, on which you can target, which is pretty cool, which is pretty cool. All right, let's press next. And then we are at the tab budget and bidding. All right, so budget. You can specify a budget that is daily, monthly, or for the duration of the campaign lifetime. All right, so we can set a daily budget, monthly budget, which you don't see that often, a monthly budget, but it's pretty cool. And then we have a lifetime budget for the campaign. Um, we cannot use both, right? So we cannot say, okay, we have a lifetime budget of uh, 5,000 euros, but then a daily budget of 500, right? So that we run 10 days. Uh, that doesn't seem like an option. So you have to choose which one you want to use. All right. And um, 
Then we have the spending limit. So let's see. Uh, the spending limit monthly. Okay, so this is in addition to your daily budget, you need to set a spending limit. Okay, so that's actually, uh, it is possible. So when you select daily and you say, okay, I want to run 500 euros a day, then you can set a monthly or a lifetime limit as well on top of that, which is uh, quite nice. So that is an option. Then we have the bit, the amount you are willing to pay each time someone clicks on your ad. Right, so this is the CPC bit, uh, bit strategy. So we can do a smart bit uh, in which they will automatically adjust your bit to get the best results based on your marketing objective. Or we can set a fixed bit where you can manually control the bit. Then we have the ad optimization. So when it says optimize, uh, then the exposure of the items in your campaign will be determined by our algorithm and your most engaging ads will be served more than others. So basically they will do the distribution of your ads uh, based on the data that they generate and their algorithm. Uh, but we can also choose for a B split testing uh, and we can even set an end date for that, which is pretty cool. So you can say, okay, I want to split test uh, for uh, just over a week until uh, May the 8th. And then on May the 8th, please check which one is best performing. And then uh, we will run that one uh, the most. Then we have the uh, CPA goal, which is optional. Uh, they recommend setting a cost per action goal. This will help you measure how your campaign is performing against your goal. Then we have the tracking code. So this code will be added to your landing page URL. Uh, so you will be able to track the campaign performance on other analytics platform. So basically you need this for your tracker, of course. And then any third party tags uh, or pixels or JavaScript tags uh, to capture your data and deliver it to other platforms. So you can also use that down here under the tracking tab. And then any additional comments, um, you can drop those right here. Uh, your campaign will start running once your account manager has reviewed your request, but you can type your request right here. All right. And then as soon as you have set everything up, we can continue and create the ads. Oh, right. All right. Actually, let's, uh, <laughs> before it starts spending, let's do it like this. Okay. All right. Oh, we need to set a bit, of course. Um, I don't know. Let's say uh, 50. The daily budget five. Uh, okay. All right. Cool. So it even calculates. That's fine. Success campaign successfully created. All right. So now it redirects us automatically to the create ads tab uh, where we can create our creatives. So we can do variations. So automatically multiply titles and images to get ad variations, which is very useful. This means that you have to uh, upload your headline once and you'll upload your images once and then it will automatically mix and match all those images with all those headlines that you have entered, which is quite nice. I like that. But you can also do one by one if you have specific um, images that go with specific headlines and you don't want to mix and match them, you have the option to do them one by one. And then the RSS, create new ads by using RSS feed. So I will just mostly primarily be using the variation one um, campaign. So we have to select the campaign we just created. So it's auto uh, automatically selected. Then the landing page URL, we're going to add that right here. Uh, so this is not going to be your landing page URL, even though Taboola calls it that. This is going to be your campaign URL. Very important. So campaign URL.com. All right. Uh, we have the option to load image and headline from the landing page URL. I'm not quite sure how that's going to look. Uh, and they can't fetch the title, of course. Let's actually make it into uh, into Daru, see what it does. I'm curious. Okay, so they grab the image and they grab the title, which is just called Daru. So that's, um, I don't think I would be using that to be quite honest, but if you have a very nice looking landing page, maybe you want to do so. Um, 
I would probably never use that feature to be quite honest. All right, so then we have the headlines. So we can just create our own headlines. Can I still remove this? No, let's delete it then. <laughs> All right, so headline one, and then let's add headline two as well. Uh, we can add up to 10 titles, by the way. Uh, and they can, uh, they all have to be less than 100 characters. All right. And they recommend between 35 and 45, but you have the option to make longer headlines if you want. So you can go up to 100 characters. All right. Uh, let's for now, keep it on two headlines or three is mandatory probably. So let's just do this. All right. Oh, it's not mandatory. It just adds automatically a new one as soon as you have entered one. So we're going to keep it on too. You can already see the image is still there of Debru. So it already mix and matches the same image with headline one and headline two. Then we have the media. So this is uh, one of the stock images that we had here. Uh, but let's upload some more images just to see how that mix and match is going to work. All right. So let's, uh, let's do this and let's do this. Perfect. Boom, boom. And then we'll see what well, we should see these images with all the different headlines. There we go. So we have the Debru image with headline one and headline two. We have this image with headline one and headline two. We have this image with headline one and headline two. So it automatically mix and matches your headlines with your images. So if we enter a headline three, you will see four more creatives getting added. Let's check. One, two, Three. All right, we have three images. So three more uh, creatives are added now because we have added a new headline and we have three images. So it mix and matches the new headline with the three um, images that we have. All right, so pretty cool. Pretty cool. I like that. Stock images. So they also have stock images, which we can use. Um, I don't think I would ever use these to be quite honest. Uh, because, well, first of all, uh, if you're using stock images, that means that other media buyers are probably using those as well, since Taboola provides them. So you're not really being unique. And then also stock images, they could be okay, but they're not always performing as good as some of the images you might be able to find yourself. So I personally like to use the upload feature. Um, and that's basically it. So then we can press submit and our campaign is created and then we have to wait for the approval. All right, so let's take a look at some of these other tabs because we now know how to create a campaign, but what else can we do in this dashboard? Uh, recommendations, there are no recommendations for your account at this time. Uh, and so apparently they will be able to send us uh, recommendations right here. Let's see. This report services personalized performance improving recommendations based on data insights collected from your account. So Taboola seems to be focusing very much on helping you and guiding you uh, by tracking your data and telling you what could be a good decision to make for your campaign, which is quite nicely. But in the end, we make the decisions, of course, unless you have turned it on that they can uh, use your creatives. They can automatically uh, see, okay, this one is getting the most traction. So we'll use that one instead of all the other ones. Uh, but if you have turned that off, you in the end make the decisions. However, Taboola can give you some recommendations to try and help you out. Then we have the tracking tab. So uh, there's no activity yet, right? We haven't launched a campaign yet. However, right here, we will be able to see uh, all the latest data of our campaigns. And right here under the tab audiences is where we can build our audiences, which we can then use for our campaign. All right. Uh, so there's one audience in here, actually. Uh, all website visits, URL not active yet. Um, and it's created by Taboola. So it seems like it's an automated uh, kind of thing where all website visits get automatically uh, put in this audience. All right. So everybody that goes to your landing page, for example, if you've set it up that way, will go automatically in that audience so that you might be able to retarget them. All right. So that is basically a quick overview of the Taboola platform. Overall, it looks very nice. They have a lot of 
cool features. And what I really love is the variation of the images and the headlines so that you only have to upload each image once and you only have to type out each headline once and it will automatically mix and match everything up. I really like that feature. It's a cool looking uh, uh, dashboard. It looks uh, just, uh, just fine. Uh, there are some parts where I'm like, uh, I like I'm missing the carrier. I won't be really missing it, but I like to have the option in case I need it. So there are some small things here and there, but overall it's a pretty cool platform. It looks nice. There are a lot of different options. There are a lot of different targeting options. So overall Tabula is pretty okay. This video is brought to you by Debaru.com, the number one affiliate marketing software platform.